Hello, hello everybody. Getting ready to get started. Hope everybody's doing well. Tacey is grabbing her Dr. Pepper because she's right with God. Type me a comment if you're out there. Let me know you're there. Throw me a thumbs up, a wave, something. Say hello. Oh, me. What a perfectly cold and miserable day outside, right? <clears throat> a good day to stay inside. Oh, yeah, we got to turn that volume down. Hello, Dina. I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Hi, Debbie. Randy Mack. Hey, buddy. Still not too late to go get coffee when we're done here. What do you think? William Intrican. The great Mr. Intrican, thank you so much for tuning in, sir. Your wonderful son, Robbie, gifted me with one of your prints, and I now count it among my most prized possessions, so thank you so much. Hi, Todd. If you guys get the chance, check out the great work of William Intrican. He is the modern Andrew Wyeth. I, I know you get tired of that comparison, William, but uh, what can I say, man? <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing today is a black and white painting. This method is called grisaille. It's a French word. Uh, I don't know why we don't just say black and white. But anyway, I'm going to paint it in black and white, and then later I will do glazes of color to build this thing up. And I'm going to do, I don't have big, just big old trees out of my system yet. So this is going to be a big old tree, woodland scene, and uh, we will uh, we'll glaze it. I don't know if we'll get to that tonight. If we don't, I'll let it sit until next week, and then we'll glaze it live. It has been a while. I hope... Everybody had a fantastic weekend, or not weekend, but holidays. If you're going to paint along with me, all you need for this one is Mars black and white, titanium white. Now, if you use a different black, that's your business. I use Mars black because no matter how much you cut it with water or medium, it does not change its tint in one direction toward red or toward blue. It stays black. A little white. Todd, Todd, say, hey, man. Todd, it's good to see you, man. Todd and I used to jam together years and years and years ago. <clears throat> and he is still a great musician. I'm not, but he is. All right. So I've already, this is a 16 by 20 stretch canvas. I've already sprayed the back with water to cause it to draw tight. Don't forget to do that, you, you guys that are just starting out. <clears throat> Make sure, always mist the back, get a mist bottle, keep one if you're painting in acrylic. I don't know what you do if you, well, I mean, even if you're oil painting, you can still mist the back. This causes it to dry and pull tight, so there's no wrinkles or folds or dents or divots. <clears throat> also, those of you that own a canvas painting and it's taking a dent and you're wondering what to do, if you'll just spray the back of it with some water, Take a hair dryer to it, it'll iron itself right out. All right, so let's get down to business. Am I forgetting anything? I would not know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. Hello. Lauren Pander. Hello, Lauren. Angie McDaniel. Angie, hey girl. Todd says you too, and thank you. Todd well, Duggle. Yeah, so what do you say we get started, guys? Now, feel free, Tacey's at the computer. Any comments, any questions at all, throw them out there. Doesn't bother me a bit. I can walk and chew bubble gum at the same time, no biggie. What I'm gonna do is just block in a shape. I've already primed this canvas with just some gray. Not a, I broke it up, let it be modeled. I just want to have a big dominant tree shape over here. And I want it to be a gnarly old thing, not a big smooth one. So I'm just kind of roughing in Angie says she loved the storm painting. Oh, well, thank you, Angie. Thank you. Y'all, it's been a good month so far. 
I've really lost count, but I think there's a total of either five or six paintings that have sold in January. And that is, of course, after a big dry run or a dry spell. Glenn Coon is here. Hey, Glenn. Good to see you, sir. He said, is that a blunt I see? Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> So let's get a big gnarly, just big chunky squat. Uh, some people uh, in photographs call them the angel trees. There's one in Savannah that's very famous. There's one in Balboa Park at San Diego. So just kind of roughing in kind of where I want it to be. And as I said, if you just join me, this is a grisaille. It'll start black and white, and then I will glaze colors over it as we go. So kind of a maybe a path right here coming down similar to the one I just did in full color and we'll we'll kind of just hint that there's something going on over here let me dig into my white because I don't want to mess with this again for a little while so I'm just going to kind of rough in like there's some bushes or something back there in the background and this is just make a mess and then determine what it is later Randy Whitaker's here. Hey, Randy. Welcome, welcome. Hi, cuz. Hey, cuz. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's get a little white. And again, I'm not going to be working wet with any color. This will get bone dry before I glaze it. So I kind of want to get my shapes kind of shaded as if you were sketching before I move on. Kimberly Coleman's here. Hi, Kim. Juanita Kendall says hi. Hey Juanita, good to see you. All right. So let's get in here and start messing with the tree. And I'm just going to work fast. I'm letting the wet paint kind of <clears throat> show me the texture of the bark. Meaning that the brush strokes are kind of showing me that bark texture. I want this big heavy limb just hanging out there. And at the risk of repeating myself, guys, the light source is going to be top left. Everybody get what they wanted for Christmas? I didn't get that million dollars. It just never seems to show up like it's supposed to. But otherwise, great Christmas. Really enjoyed it. Big old twisty gnarly oak. And that long, long month of January is finally over. Good Lord, yes. And that is a long month. Mm -hmm. Todd Tubble says me either. <laughs> <laughs> if they would just get it right and get us that lottery money, we'd make a lot of people happy. Of course, I guess you got to play it to win it, right? And if you're painting along with me, this is all about not just having fun, but really learning your composition and your contrast. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm really known, um, my collectors know me because of the use of vibrant, vibrant color. And I have no problem with that. But every now and then I'll get a little bit, uh, not lazy, but just dependent on the color doing the work for me. And not focusing on that contrast so we want to we want to focus in this one on some contrast getting in here so I got a big old limb happening right there Hot says, yeah man, <laughs> yeah, man. Mm -hmm. all right big root right there and again I really want this to be gnarly a knotty gnarly old oak all right. Now the wonderful thing about acrylics is this is drying just almost as fast as I can get it onto the canvas, <clears throat> which means I'll be able to immediately start shading this thing. So let's do that very thing. I'm gonna grab some, I'm gonna mix up some gray, just titanium white and Mars black. I'm gonna start kind of just shooting in some textures. 
light coming from the top left. There'll be a shadow under here, the armpit, if you will, of this particular tree. And less light on the undersides. There is some light there, despite what uh, some artists will show you. Reflected light. Is that Christine? Uh, it could be. I could have sworn I just heard somebody say, hey. Yeah, right Did on. you? Yeah, I did. Hey. Who's here? Maybe it was TV. It was on TV, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting to hear things, honey. It's me a little bit. We're starting to hear things. <laughs> All right. And notice also, I haven't changed brushes. There's no need yet. Just playing around with lights and darks. Christine's supposed to be here. Well, maybe she don't feel good. I think she was running around having a good time today and just forgot all about it. There we go. Starting to get some of that twisty, twisty effect. And again, this is almost like sketching, but of course much faster. <clears throat> Which makes it much more fun, because you can see results quicker. I think I'm going to, let's get a little white, a little more white. And really kind of work this background to push it backwards. I want this to be a little more distant than what it's looking like. There we go. And it's a lot like sculpting. You put it there, you take it away, you put it there, you take it away. I should say like sculpting in clay. Because if you're sculpting in marble and you take it away, you ain't putting it back. Not without some industrial strength glue. <laughs> Don't hate me. My jokes are bad. Don't stop watching. Don't stop watching. My jokes are bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> and of course, if you're interested in buying any of my artwork, it's all for sale with the exception of one piece that I painted just for me. Uh, and for Tacy, and it ain't going nowhere for a while. We'll enjoy it for a while, then it'll probably end up for sale. And I do hope everyone's doing good, enjoying a nice, lazy Saturday. We deserve one now and then, don't we? Nice and loose and free. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Bob Ross would say we've got some decisions to make here, but I don't, I don't quite paint with the same mindset he does, so we don't have decisions to make. We're painting intuitively. We're just letting the brush jump around and do what it wants to do. But what I do need to do is go ahead and start putting in some of the uh, leafy areas. So I'm going to switch brushes now. And I'm going to a number, I think this is a number eight, flat. <clears throat> and I use only natural bristle brushes. Um, they're stiffer, they hold more, well, they don't hold more paint. A soft brush holds more paint, but they move the paint easier around on a canvas. <clears throat> and I just really enjoy them. <clears throat> With just nothing but water on the brush right now, I'm spreading around this top layer just to diffuse it a little bit more. You want this to not be blended because that's not how nature works. So you just want to suggest there's something going on back here. Maybe there's bushes, trees, whatever. Get my big brush just for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and rough in a foreground. just to have something there to kind of hold the fort. There we go. Oh, man. 
if I can finally figure out, <clears throat> I have a YouTube channel that I haven't posted to in forever because I get more views on Facebook, but if I can figure out how to download off of Facebook and then move it over to YouTube, I will, for those of you that watch over there or subscribed over there. I don't want to neglect the channel, <laughs> but you know, I try to go where the where the business is. Robbie Intrican says hello. Hey, Robbie. Very delighted to have you with us, sir. What I'm going to do is use this uniform gray. Robbie, what I'm doing, sir, you'll be familiar with. Robbie is a good artist in his own right. Um, this is going to be a Grisaille. So the color glazes at a later date. But right now, just black and white. There's Charles Adams. Hey Charles, my brother. Kimberly Gal Galliard. Hey Kim. Galliard. Yep, Galliard. Galliard. Uh -huh. okay. I wouldn't show him butcher for last name. <laughs> hmm. It's okay. You still can't see my say my last name. <laughs> Charles says good evening. It's only been ten years. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting some white in here where the light maybe is breaking through. Robbie says, hey, Christopher. Which Robbie? Intrican. Robbie Intrican, my man. All right. <coughs> There'll be a bit of a shadow, of course, under the tree. So with a little darker gray, I'm just going to kind of shoot in some brambly. Maybe it's leaf matter. Maybe it's pine straw. I don't know. Why would it be pine straw under the tree? I don't know. Anyway, some stuff. Some undergrowth here. Just nice and loose. Give the tree something to sit on. And let's do some leafy stuff up here. Although I'm kind of digging this big, bold, naked tree. Maybe I, maybe it won't have leaves. What do y'all think? Charles says he can help with transferring the videos. Oh gosh, I would love any help you could give me, brother. You have no idea the struggles I have with technology. Big old thick, heavy limb there, branching off. What do y'all think? Leaves or leave it as a big old chunky, just bare tree? Let's give it a little, couple of little trees living back here in the background. Y'all tell me, talk to me. Nobody's talking to me. They don't love me anymore. There's a delay. You gotta wait. Nobody loves me anymore. Whatever. <laughs> they never loved you to begin with, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. All right, let's do a few more of those. I'm digging that. You don't need a, I mean, I have a wide selection of brush brushes. You don't need a lot, though. Um, I've pointed this out before. Let me point it out again. Again, shall I? Your, your flats, you can use, lay it flat, pardon the pun, and pull with it. You can use the tip. You can use the side, and it becomes very thin. And you can even use the back end to suggest things happening back there. More so with oils than with acrylic because it'll stay wet longer. Robbie says naked. William says no foliage. Robbie says leaves are overrated. I'm digging it. Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's where my heart was, so I'm glad everybody's kind of agreeing. I was worried about that naked comment for a second there. But... <laughs> <laughs> Robbie says his daddy says no leaves. All right. Juanita says bare tree. I, hey, I told you, just wait. I am loving it, guys. Good, good, good. That does mean I need to get up here and work this little uh, sky area in between the limbs. So let me do that real quick. Just kind of brighten it up a little bit as if there's some light back there. 
because that'll give us good contrast. And thank y'all for your feedback. It means the world to me. And I'll remind you again, this, like any of my paintings, will be for sale. I'm going to do an auction on this one, honey. So what I'll do, if you hang around and you like what you see as it develops, you can tell me, hey, leave it black and white or finish it up color with the glazes, but I'd like to buy it and I'm going to bid on it. You do that by just PMing me. Tacey and I will get the PMs, but it's a live auction. So when we go from being live, when we close down, that's going to be it. And I'm going to not put a reserve on this no more than if, if you, uh, if I have to mail it to you, I got to put a reserve with the shipping and handling. If you're local, no reserve. Well, I guess there is a reserve starting at 20 bucks. Now, not tooting my horn, but my artwork sells for hundreds. So 20 bucks is a steal. Steven Stitchcomb's here. Mr. Stinchcomb, good to see you, sir. Marie Hatchett is here. Hey, Marie! All right, we got some stuff going on. Look, you know, you just want to create interest. Uh, the great Stuart Davies, he says Davies, but it's spelled, uh, or he says Davis, but it's spelled Davies. If you get a chance, check him out on YouTube. He's a great painter, lives in France, um, but he's British. Everybody calls him Grandpa. He's a phenomenal painter. And he uh, has a video that went viral. And it's called The Illusion of Detail. And it's a good video, but my point in bringing it up is that's all you're doing. Is you're making the illusion of something going on back there. Now, we want to brighten this horizon or the top of this path. Like the light is shining back there. And bring little puddles of light forward. And these are just little dashes because the human eye wants to fill in the rest and will. We're programmed that way. We, we, our brains try their best to make sense out of the random. That's why you see shapes in wallpaper, uh, the shower curtain, the carpet. There's a thing I call the chicken rooster in our carpet or our rug in the living room. <laughs> I just call it the chicken rooster because that's what it looks like to me. I mean, the uh, squirrel rooster. Marie's waving hello. Hi, Marie. <laughs> Marie is good people. Hope your family is well. Hope your granddaughter's doing better. Is Connie there? Seen Connie come in. All right, look, now we've already got a bright little path coming forward. We'll do more with that later. Let me speed up because I'm making that look like you have to think about it and you don't. You just shoot it in there. <clears throat> Some painters are meticulous and careful and they produce beautiful soul stirring work. I am not one of them. I am not meticulous. Now, I will fiddle with a painting for two forevers before I'm happy with it sometimes. But for the most part, I love to just paint intuitively. Paint what I see. In this case, this does not exist anywhere except in my mind. This is just a mental picture I have of a tree I wanted to do. As a matter of fact, I sketched one. I'll show you. About an hour ago, just to kind of give myself an idea of what I was looking for. Just a big old chunky tree. But that's it. That's the only reference I've got. And I, as you can tell, I'm not even really using that reference. So let's go ahead and play around with some lights and darks. So the brightest part of my painting of this tree is going to be where that light is coming in and smacking the side of it. Elaine Ford is here. Hello, Elaine. So let's, let's do that. And what I'm doing is just touch and pull, touch and pull, just to create this kind of rough texture, a little bit random. And if I get too light and I don't like it, 
I'm going to deliberately do that right here. Let's do it right here. If I don't like that, here's the amazing thing. You just load some black and you run right back over it. And it just adds to the effect. It gives it more texture. So let's keep that going. This will cast a shadow on this one. This old tree has stood through some big storms and it has bent, but it is not broken. Kind of like a lot of us, right? We endure the storm. It shapes us, but we still stand. Ooh, that was kind of profound. And then here and there, it's just going to catch some random light. And again, I'm not paying much attention to what I'm doing because I can absolutely change this at any time. Let's get a little bit of a mid-tone going back in here because I want this backside to really be dark. So I'm going to kind of shoot in. Casey left her TV show playing out there on the television, and I keep hearing people get my agent on and jacking up. It's a little too light. Let me grab some black. Just got to work it in here. There we go. Didn't want it quite that light. Because without that darkest dark, your contrast isn't very defined and contrast in painting even more than color is king what do you guys think shoot me some comments tell me something uh oh what happened um maybe there's not no, it's still working just fine. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Okay. Hey, for once, it wasn't my fault. Maybe it was just the computer. Yeah, maybe so. Although it is a new computer and shouldn't be doing anything stupid. Could be a fake ice Yeah, that's much more likely. Mm -hmm. Shooting in some textures here on the underside of this limb. There we go. Big old ancient oak. How many of you guys love to go to like Savannah or St. Augustine or Beaufort and see the big giant oaks with the Spanish moss hanging in them? I know that's one of my favorite things on her. I want this guy to be a little thicker, so I'm gonna I'm gonna thicken him up a little bit. There we go. We want massive. There we go. Big old Joker. Let's darken this side over here some. Susan Davis is here. Hey, Susan. Susan is a burgeoning artist and a friend. Glad to have you. She says beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you. Also, if you're interested and you're in the Griffin area, I do painting classes every Friday at Hobby Lobby from 6 to 8. It's $30 per class, but you get two hours. Most instructors are going to charge you that much and give you one hour. Well, by the time you set up and then clean up when you're done, you've used up your whole hour. So I want at least one whole pure hour of instruction. So I give two for the price of one. If you're interested, just let me know. She says, hey, Christopher, what a walk. 
And Cat Blue. I don't know. I don't know if Cat Blue's here. I haven't seen her. There's Christine here. Old Kitty Cat Blue. It's really playing with texture right now. I don't know, I think that's starting to look like something. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I'm going to bring that limb on out like so. Yeah. Sometimes the painting just tells you what it wants to do. And I try to listen. Try, try, try. So far, only two brushes have been used. Try to keep it that way. I like limiting my palette and limiting my brushes. It really forces me to use all of my skills and dig deep. And I like a challenge. Let's give this root a little daylight. It's coming out forward here. There we go. <coughs> That's starting to look like something. What do you think, hon? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means. It's pretty. Okay. It's pretty. <coughs> Oops, excuse me, y'all. I knocked the camera. I didn't mess anybody up with that. And I'm also, guys, I'm laying the paint on really thick. I don't know if my phone's camera is good enough to show you. But I really like the, it's called impasto. I like the impasto texture of thick paint. Oh, man, that's beautiful. I wasn't complimenting myself. I'm talking about the contrast that just happened there. I'll turn that up with a little bit more white. Robbie says, quit calling me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey. Let's jagged this old limb up a little bit. It was too neat. There we go. All right. Balance it out a little bit here. He says, loving the tree. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Everyone loves to be complimented, but when your artist friends give you a compliment, you really, really appreciate it. Because they know the struggle. Teresa Fry Green is here. Hey, Teresa. Teresa is also a wonderful artist. You guys be sure to check out her work. Um, she can type in the comments the link to her Facebook store or her website. Let's have one limb climbing up this way. There we go. <clears throat> one of my favorite artists and one of my favorite people. There we go. Ooh, I like that. I think I'm going to have a background tree kind of leaning over this way just to provide a counterpoint to all that weight going to the left. Oh, Teresa says, hey, stranger. <laughs> I know I missed you last time you were in town to get coffee. I did take a rain check, though. That means you got to 
We got to do it one day soon. Rusty Maggots is here. Hey, Rusty. Known Rusty for a lot of decades. All right, I'm going to switch now to a, a liner brush. I wonder if that's Christine. Now, some of y'all will know that uh, uh, I really drive them crazy just knock, knock on my workstation easel. Some of y'all remember uh, a year and a few months ago that I broke my arm in a few places. It was a really bad break on my good painting arm. So forgive me, i got to kind of lower my arm for a second and take a little bit of a break. Otherwise, my hands start shaking violently and I can't hold the, the brush. All right, small, round. It's supposed to be a liner, but look at that Look at that curve from it sitting in the water too long because I'm negligent to my brushes. But, hey, you know what? We make it work. No. No. All right, Christine, if you're out there, I want to know why you're not here. You said you were coming. <laughs> I was going to make her paint with me. And I like to use the little liner for doing leaves, bark, uh, just small, interesting little textures. It's not really detailed, but it really adds something to the painting. A little bit different texture. Of course, water is your friend. Guys, if you're painting with acrylics and you feel the paint pull, the second you feel it pull on the canvas, you need water. Water is your friend. There's another lane going up that way. Now I don't want to put too much down here on the underside because that part would be in shadow so I don't know what I was thinking just then. Let's darken that back up. But in order for that to show dark, this must be lighter. You cannot see light without dark. You can't see dark without light. So let's lighten this part up some. Cindy Holden is here. Hey, Cindy. Cindy and I worked together for a whole lot of years. And she is a counselor now. And I'm very proud of her. When I knew her, she was just going to school. Oh, I'm digging that. Digging that. What do you guys think? Scary. Yeah, what a gnarly old <laughs> tree. Old man Willow from the Lord of the Rings that tried to eat the hobbits. That's who we've got here. Except he's not a willow, he's an oak. I was going to say, he's the oak that lives in our yard. Yeah, the big squeaky <laughs> oak that wants to fall on our house. <laughs> <laughs> that thing does scare me. Where's my Dr. Pepper? I don't know. I was going to take a break. Did you leave it on the table over there? No, I could have sworn I brought it in here. That's mine. No, I went and got mine. Oh. Quit accusing. I didn't did accuse. <laughs> Crazy woman. I accuse you. <laughs> Y'all, she's not right. I'm telling yes, you. She is not right in the head. Help me. All right, you're going to use the same technique with black on the back side. There were two sitting in there. I assume the cold one side. is the recent one. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. What we really need is some coffee. When we take a break, I'll go make some. I'm going to get a little bit of gray going in here. Yeah, that's, that's looking like something there. Now, of course you don't have to detail bark like this. You can just throw the shape up there and as I've said a million times, the viewer's eye will do the work. All you have to do is suggest what's there. But I'm just having fun, so why not? Why not do it?
And that is the point. When Monet left Glaze Academy, he just stormed out one day. Of course, he went back but because he needed his allowance from his parents. But anyway, he stormed out and Renoir was left sitting in the room with the master of the school and uh, the master of the school asked Renoir, said, I suppose you want to leave too because you're not having fun. And Renoir said, Monsieur, if it was not fun, I would not do it. So if you're not having fun painting, check your, uh, check your motivation. Let's have a, a little spindly limb kind of doing its thing going up through here. I'll come back and foreshadow that in a minute, or excuse me, foreshorten that. Oh, I'm digging it. Kathleen Lanier is here. Hi, Kathleen. How are you? <clears throat> Another local artist. Although I never know if you're local or not, Kathleen. Are you local these days? And if it exists there, it will cast a shadow here. So we'll give that a little bit of a shadow. And I'm gonna whisper some backlighting in over here. Just a little hint. There's stuff going on back here. <clears throat> Everybody ready for the Super Bowl tomorrow? No. I'll be honest, I haven't followed it all. So. <laughs> I did kind of check out what's going on. Kind of want Kansas City to win, but I have the feeling. I don't know if that quarterback has the experience against that uh, San Francisco defense. Yeah, that's like. All right, let's play around with this a little bit. Because the light would definitely hit the top of this bare big limb. And Tanya light up. Collier's here. Who? Tanya Collier. Hello, Tanya. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Tanya. Lisa Hutton. Hey Lisa, very good to have you here. Good to have all of you. I love having my friends hang out in the studio with me while I work. This uh, this top part is of course going to get some light. It's always hard for me if an object is horizontal and the light's coming from here, and then you turn it. You know, eventually this side gets light, but it's also shadow, so it's really hard uh, sometimes to <laughs> determine where you want your light to be. You just play with it. I tell my students in art class that painting is about asking yourself, I wonder what would happen if I did this, that, or whatever. And then you find out. And if it works, great. If not, it's only paint. Just paint over it. Nobody dies. William Intrican says, I don't think I will ever see a poem as beautiful as a tree. Absolutely, sir. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's back in this part in and give this some meaning. There we go. And then to show this bow of the tree is in front of this one, we'll come in and just kind of lay in some thin light right there. And that's all you need. To show it's in front. All right, moving on, moving on. Get a little more light right here. I just feel like it needs it right there. 
All right. Now, most of this is still wet, but the drying speed of acrylics is such that a large part of it is dry. Which means your paint will not dilute as you paint on top of it. In other words, it's not going to blend with what's there. Chemically, Cheryl, it'll Cheryl Pitts is here. Hey, Cheryl. No, that's okay. It'll blend uh, optically, but not chemically. Or molecularly, as some artists say. I'm not one of them. <laughs> Let's give this a little definition right here. My son Christian, who is a great musician, just truly talented, has started painting. Now, I taught him to play at first, then he surpassed me. I don't think I want to give him painting lessons because I don't need him blowing my doors off at that too. So, son, go watch Bob Ross video. <laughs> <laughs> You're on your own, boy. Oh gosh, that was that sounded terrible, didn't it? Just kidding, you guys. <laughs> Scoob's here. Hey, Scoob. Good to have you here, buddy. One of the best people I know. Truly a good person. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'll play with some of the gray I've got mixed up here. Now, I'm doing something right now that I, I would fuss at my students for doing. My elbow is resting on the work table. You should never do that. So, do as I say, not as I do. I'm doing it because of the aforementioned injury and the little bit of trembling it causes when I hold my arm out for any length of time. All right. Good, 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 good. Okay, guys, this needs to dry a little, just a little. You want it to be tacky, but not bone dry. So I'm going to rinse my brush thoroughly. Thoroughly. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to put in a little bit of uh, these trees back here in the background. And then we're going to start working this foreground. I'm going to call the tree good for right now. It may want and tell me it wants uh, more in just a little bit. If so, the uh, paints are right here on the palette. I can absolutely keep going with that. Angie Hall is here. Hey, Angie. So, Tacey, tell them that one joke you know. Hi. Let me, uh, no, no joke. that glare is pretty bad right there where it doesn't need to be bad. Let me see if I can adjust that. Just a little. See if that gets any better. There's a little delay, so I have to watch it. There we go. There we go. And I can tell already from looking at the TV screen, the computer screen, this needs to stay darker. So get some pure black. Shoot it in here. There we go. All right. Now, let's put in some of this kindling, some, I guess, some young growth or dead growth or who knows let's put some of that in there I use a very wet brush to do this going into my black almost the consistency of ink 
And I'm just going to kind of start at the top with just touching the brush and pull down, let it be zigzaggedy. And let it fade out. When your brush is emptying itself, <clears throat> excuse me, of paint, it's doing you the favor of shading. Don't go straight up and down with all of them, but some lean, let them cross in front of and behind each other, some bigger, some smaller. Nature does not like repetition. Nature likes random. And the more random you can be with organic shapes in your painting, excuse me, got a hair, the more realistic they can be, or the more realistic they'll come across, I should say. <clears throat> There's Cat Lulu. Hey, Christine. One going over this way, one over here. Let me know if you guys can see this. Um, I, I, I can't tell what you're seeing. Tacey's at the computer on the monitor. She can see what you see. I cannot. Whoops. Look, I made a mistake, but I just wiped it away. Because we don't make mistakes. We just have happy little accidents. Um, you're going to get a copyright strike. <laughs> Bob wouldn't sue me. Bob Ross loves us. Bob is good. Let's have this one go way up there. And these are just old, fallen, brittle trees, shrub, scrub, whatever, living back there. I'm going to put in... Just kind of some, like some bushes or something living back there, some undergrowth. Just scribbling. Not really worried about, just as Stuart Davies says, I'm just chucking the paint onto the canvas. Don't much care where it goes. It's doing its job. I'm going to have a bush sitting right here. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and play around with the foreground a little bit. Now, when I'm normally painting and not filming, I'm standing up and I'm moving around, so none of this is hard for angles. But being that I am sitting down and filming, the angle for what I'm about to do is a little bit challenging. So it might take a couple of attempts. We're gonna work on this path after I get done playing around with Mark. I also wanted to wish a happy birthday belatedly. I did it on the day, but happy birthday to the mother of my son, Christian. Okay, I'm gonna take some of the black and we're gonna break up in small little horizontal strokes. the ground in the foreground. It's just the ground. You don't say I'm painting leaves or pine straw or whatever. It's just a shape. <coughs> I tell my students all that it's just a shape. Just paint the shape. Christine says late to the party. Sorry, I was tired. Oh. Yeah, I saw her while you were tired. Those cocktails you were inventing at old Charlie's. That's what's up. I'm telling.
Well, hey, we're all grown ups here. <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, just chopping in the black. This foreground is still a little bit wet, so I'm able to blend it on the canvas instead of mixing it on the palette. And what we're doing is creating interest and the illusion of detail in the foreground. Be random, mix it up, and work all over the canvas. I know this area down here will be really dark because of where the light source is. So it gets a little more attention from the Mars black. Where some areas will get a combination with the titanium white and some will just get the titanium white. Just illusions. That's all it is. That's all painting is. I've said it on here before. I'll say it again. Monet said, you are not painting a flower. You are putting a pigment on a surface to represent a flower. Kind of profound, isn't it? So again, as we move along here, if you're interested in, in bidding on this painting, it is for sale. Starting bid is $20. Just shoot a private message over. And uh, if you're local, I'll deliver it. The only reason the 20 is there is to cover shipping and handling if you're not local. Because it's expensive to ship. Ain't it, honey? <laughs> Thank you for your support. <laughs> Never shipped one. I wouldn't know. I had sticker shock the first time I shipped one. You want how much? <laughs> Let me go call my buyer and tell him I got to raise the price a hundred bucks. Just kidding. I would never do that. Never, never, never. <clears throat> but this or any of my paintings that you go over to Crystal. Bye bye. Christopher Blaylock Fine Art. And any piece you want, of course, is available there. Just hit me up. Look at that. Look at the light coming through there now. Robbie says it's looking great. Thanks, Robbie. I really appreciate it, sir. I think I'm going to play a little bit right here with the white. Maybe this little tree over here is catching more light than the others. Random, random, random. <laughs> he says, there you go, calling me honey again. <laughs> I called him honey? No, you called me honey. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, Robbie. <laughs> I'm old and I confuse easily. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> oh, Lord. Y'all don't feed the fire on that one. <laughs> Let's give a little bit of leaf action over here, too. <coughs> Just to break up these little treelets back here. There we go. Now, I could be using a bigger brush to do this, but I'm having fun with a little one and just little strokes I can get. So let's have some light peeking through the shadow down here on the ground. Just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want sameness. All right. Continuing. Little splashes of light, and they will get bigger as they come forward. Robbie says, that tree looks so good. I would not add too much behind it. Love the way you have the composition. Thank you, sir, and I agree. Not going to be a whole lot going on back there. 
And I'm really laying the paint on chunky. I like that. I cannot for the life of me paint with a palette knife. I will do it live one day and show you guys how terrible I am at it. But I do like the effect the palette knife gives with that big chunky paint going on. So many times I will, with a brush, just lay it on thick. Now to lead the eye from back there to up here, got to have a really bright, strong spot here. And boom. <laughs> oh, Lord. Christine says, but it needs Scooby-Doo spooky eyes. <laughs> you can put them in your painting, not mine. Robbie says, makes me want to walk down the path beside the tree. Yeah, man, I feel you. That's what I go for in these things is just, I wonder what's around that corner. He says, love it. Thank you so much. Robbie, I still got to get you to Show me how to paint with egg temper one day. I've got to play with it before I get senile. Got to learn. Something I've never done and I want to. Put a, I don't know if I'm going to put a bush here or not. I'm kind of digging the uh, the foreground as it is. Mm -hmm. You agree? Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Does it need a happy little bush down here or just bring this path on out? How about if I just do some scrubity scrub over there? Scrubity scrub is a copyrighted term. <laughs> <laughs> Along with all my other invented words. <laughs> yes. I already said, y'all, if she ever tries to have me committed, all she'd have to do is show them these videos and they go, yep, lock him up. <laughs> but, Your Honor, she's in the video too. <laughs> yes, but she's not saying crazy things. This has a little... <laughs> Christine says very technical. Scrubby scrub. <laughs> scrubby scrub. That's it. Some scrubby scrub. Uh-oh, what was that? Things be making noises. Did it come out of the computer or the phone? Yeah, my phone. Okay, I don't care. <laughs> That's your business. I'm trying to um, do both. I understand. Not really, but it seemed like the thing to say. I'm gonna lay some thick black down here. I should be using a bigger brush to do this, but who cares? We're just having fun. So that I can come in with a white while it's still wet and get all these wonderful mid-tones without having to mix them on the palette. Wet on wet is the technique. And just kind of scrubbing around down here creates the illusion that there's something going on we don't know what it is, but it's there. <coughs> this is also a good technique for doing water, which I'll do a waterscape here pretty soon. I haven't done one in a while. I've been, been a minute. 
Yeah, I've been yeah, I've been doing the big clouds and I've been doing woodlands. But I love to paint. Water is my favorite thing to paint. Beyond, without a doubt, beyond the all other things. Yeah, we'll make this like it's a little hill coming down here. Kind of guiding us down that path. There we go. And a little bit more of a mid right here. Just to lead us. That sounds great. I don't know how y'all feel about coffee, but you know, <laughs> I think everybody here knows how I feel about it. God made anything better, he kept it to himself. And he was having a great day that day. Of course, God has a great day every day. <clears throat> Just the illusion that something's going on down here. A little bit of some of this. A bit of that. All right, let's get back up here. And put in some highlights on the edge of this bark because this part would really be catching the light even though it's down near the ground and we're gonna work in a little bit of mid-tone here again <clears throat> excuse me only two colors and uh, doing a wash is just thinning out your acrylic or your oil very very thin and then it's if you imagine laying colored cellophane over parts of the painting that's what you'll be doing as you uh, as you do your glaze and it adds kind of a your colors almost glow when you do that and it's a very fun technique uh, I won't say it's easy, but it's not hard either. You just do it a few times and you get used to it. And it'll do for you. All right. A little bit darker. A little bit of here. Because this, we're going to foreshorten, showing the tops of this root that's coming forward. All the things I learned in art class from the great Sonny Bartlett that I hated at the time, the things I use in every single composition I do. So I will never ever be able to repay that knowledge, but I do my best to teach what he taught me to every one of my students, which is how to see, not how to paint, not how to draw, but just how to see like an artist. If you can see like an artist, this is just mechanics. You'll get that. Juanita says she just put a pot on. Good for you, girl. Todd Togel says sorry. Sorry for what, buddy? I'm lost on that one. I don't know. Unless he got booted or had to leave or something. Come uh, back. Oh, okay. Maybe. Yep, there's always that. All right.
few more little small bowels back here in the background. Raymond Ray is here. Hi Raymond. Good to see you sir. Welcome. Says, Thanks, brother. Appreciate you. And I know I commented when you did this, Todd, but like a couple of years ago, you did an acoustic version of Walking in Memphis. One of the best I've ever heard, man. That was a great rendition. You ought to repost it. <clears throat> or shoot, do it again. great version of that song. I love that song too. So, My son, who is a very accomplished guitar player, loved your version as well. dig through two years worth of post to find it. <laughs> and I guess if I have to, you know. And then a little bit of suggested texture back here. What I want to do too, and I'm going to do this, let me grab a bigger brush. I want it to look as if the path goes this way and there's a break in the trees. So I'm going to go back to my number eight. I'm going to grab pure white with a very wet brush and just shoot in a break in the trees back here. To show us that the path goes on. I'm just going to blur it. Look at that. Yeah, man. Scott's here. Hey cousin. Tobias Gibson. Mr. Gibson, speaking of talented musicians, I was just talking about you the other day. Who was I talking to? I think it was my son. Y'all got to get together and jam. Two superb musicians. And I mean that, superb. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm digging that. Y'all let me know what you think of the, the, the light breaking through back here. I'm play with it just a little bit more. Yeah, man. Maybe with the brightest part being right here. Really lead the eye. I like that. Pretty. And when I glaze this, I'm I'm thinking ahead now of the areas that I want to be that really light on the top of the trees. And that's why I'm shooting in a little more white back there on top of these. I'm going to make a lighter gray and transition that a little bit. Robin Royals is here. Hey, Robin. Gave you an okay sign. Right on. Cat Baloo says looks great. Thank you, dear. And this is a little too smooth. I'm not really going to do anything up here other than just leave some brush marks to indicate there's something up there other than just this negative shape. There we go. Laura Stevens is here. Hello, Laura. Welcome. All right. Ainge is back. 
Welcome back. Welcome back. What time do it be, honey? Mm, 7.12. Yep, it's getting about that time and we're about at the point where we're going to bring this one to a close. Robin says, hey. Love. Hey, Robin. And baby big heart eye. Oh, we love is the Robin, but Robin is going to be late to her own funeral, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and you know it, girl. Pam Myers. Hey, Pam. Good to see you. <laughs> Angie says, sorry I took a nap and woke up to this amazing tree. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking just a little more touchy touch of bright light right in here. And we're going to call this one done for now because I am going to glaze it. And any changes I make, I'll make them live next week. I will not work on this in the studio this week. I've got other ones to do anyway. I got a commission. Got to do. So, we're going to call this one done for now. Again, this is a grisaille, so it's going to uh, it's going to get a lot more work with glazes, glazing color. I'm just putting a darker shadow under it. This is a big, massive tree, so it's going to have a big, massive shadow. There we go. All right, so we're going to call that good for now. Listen, thank you guys for hanging out with us. We love you very, very much. I'm delighted to paint along with you guys. If you're interested in buying this one, again, you can bid on it today or you can wait for it to be finished and bid on it next week. Reserve on it is 20 bucks. Just PM me. Or feel free to go over to Christopher Blaylock Fine Art on Facebook. And if it's not sold, you can buy it. But in the meantime, thanks for hanging out. We love you. God bless. And have a great, great, great week. Ooh. Bye, y'all. Yep. Tell them that joke you know, Tasty. <laughs> Christine says, me too, nap after outing with Susan. I plan to come, but still too tired to hang. <laughs> Bye, guys.